Hey YouTubers, Easy Jeezy here. Uh, I thought I'd uh, continue on with the Delorto Weber uh, instructional portion here. And uh, of course, this is unrehearsed and real world. Uh, I'm not going to keep going on and on about my 2 liter, but uh, I am considering using it for like a test engine and uh, possibly trying out one of these uh, single Weber manifold sets. Now that's a 2 liter and if you recall from the other video uh, you need to size your carburetor to the displacement of your engine. I'm not going to go over that again. You can look at that video and what that refers to is picking a carburetor with the right size venturis, the right size chokes and there was the chokes and we showed you what they look like in that other one uh, you've got one for each throat and it's that hourglass effect that this creates in the carburetor bore that creates a low pressure that draws the fuel in and atomizes it. Now when you when they talk about a 44 Weber that it's 44 millimeters across the throat if it's a uh, uh, a 40 then it's 40 millimeter 48 you take the big honk and 48 it's a bigger hole but if you do the math you would see that it doesn't make sense to put those big carburetors on a small engine it can be done and again I need you to open your mind don't don't look at everything that I say as bottom line and always and forever and that type of thing. There's always there's always differences to it. That's why when the Italians designed these carburetors, they wanted to have a carburetor body that was designed and engineered to work well, but they also gave it the interchangeability for the different size engines. Uh, Prior to fuel injection, nobody uses carburetors on new cars now, but prior to that, when these were available, the Italian engine designers liked to have, instead of increasing the displacement by adding size to each cylinder, they added cylinders. They, they're they the ones that had the V12s and, and the V10s and, you know, all these uh, multi-cylinder engines. So... Uh, they would line these carburetors up and that way they could run a radical camshaft and they could uh, have a smooth running engine because what what in essence a Weber carburetor does when it has two throats like this instead of having two carburetors you have a common float bowl that is shared by two different cylinders and it's what's below this that draws the actual fuel air mixture in now I can't tell you how many times I've been to the sand dunes and somebody buys a a sand rail and it's got one carburetor or two, doesn't matter, they get it out there to the sand dunes, it's running bad and they're just frustrated as heck but it'll run wide open, you know, if they wrap it up and, and really get out there they can zip around the, the dunes but that gets old real fast. What you want is drivability. You, you need to tune that carburetor and I want to go over this tuning uh, and what the different screws actually uh, actually mean here. So uh, let me just grab a uh, screwdriver for a pointer here. Okay, what you've got here, let's, let's just kind of do the rundown. Um, I hope this is uh, <laughs> coming out right. Okay, let's just look at one half of the carburetor because it's duplicated on the other side. This is your fuel air adjustment screw. When you're trying to tune your idle, this is the screw that you're going to be turning in and out. This small screw next to it here, this is a airport and it allows you to put more air in under the butterfly 
and I think you can see it right here. There it is. Here's your... <laughs> this is great. Glad I took it off. Okay. You can see that the the small screw is just an air port that goes in under the butterfly. That allows you to tune it. It allows you to synchronize the two throttle bores. Okay? When you put your your unison on there to to synchronize them. Okay, here's your here's your needle. I hope you can see that. This is your idle air fuel needle. It's not the jet, it's the needle to calibrate the proportion of air and fuel that's going to go into the cylinder that's fed by that one single side of the carburetor. Okay? You don't want to bottom these out real hard. If you got to be real gentle with these things, you, you screw it in and you back it out. On a Weber, it's usually like a half of a turn uh, to a three-quarter of a turn. Um, and I believe there's a type of a synchronizing tool that you can use a uh, four different um, hoses and connect them to the carburetor intake side to measure the vacuum. When you're measuring that vacuum and that flow, you can tune. It gives you tunability. Okay, so you get out there on the dunes and your your buggy is snapping and popping and it's not running very good and it's it's not it's just snapping and hiccuping. Snapping usually is a lean condition. And the idle jet on a Weber you have one on each side, and I'm going to take this one out right here. This would be for this cylinder. Okay, now it's right in the end. Okay, let's just go all the way here. Okay, that is the idle jet. This is the holder. So, what I would be doing was looking through this, take it out if it's snapping and popping, put it against a light background, be sure you don't drop it in the sand or wherever you're working, and blow through it. Try to make sure that it's clear. If it's been running, you're going to have a little bit of gas in there and you won't be able to see through it. So you just need to blow that gas out of there and then make sure it, it the jet is clear and you can go on to the next one. Now, if you've got two of these on your Volkswagen four-cylinder engine you're gonna have one jet for each cylinder so you got the jet for this side and this cylinder and you've got the idle jet for this side and this cylinder so it's duplicated and so are the mixture screws on this side both sides so that's the name of that too now this is your accelerator pump the pump diaphragm is under this cover and you can by changing the the setting of this stroke you can change the amount of fuel that squirts into the carburetor when you step on the gas. Now, what you, what, if you're stabbing on the gas, you're not jamming it in there. What you're doing is allowing this to move back, and this spring is what's putting a controlled pressure on the diaphragm, which is going to force the fuel into the top of the venturi, in the top of the, the throttle bore. And that's what's going to give you your smooth acceleration. Um, if it stumbles, you may need more or less. You may have jet jetting issues. Uh, and now these stacks that are on the top, these are the main jets. This is for wide open throttle. And the, the jet's right here on the end. And it just pushes on. And I'll probably have trouble getting it out of here. Excuse me. Never grab your jet by the, uh, by the numbers. They're hard enough to see as it is. You don't want to be scratching them up. Okay, this is a 120 main jet. There's the numbers. Okay, there it is. These rarely get clogged up. They rarely get clogged up. But it's the same procedure. Get a light background. Blow through it. Blow the other side. You can... I used to carry a can of uh, carburetor cleaner or brake cleaner. 
and uh, I would do it out on the sand dunes. I'd give it a little squirt through there, and that way I could see it and uh, not have to stick it in my mouth and uh, just kind of clean things up. It, just nice to have something aerosol. If you have your gaskets are going to start weeping in dirt and sand, road grime if you're on the street is going to be sticking in there and uh, it's nice to have some carb cleaner or brake cleaner to uh, clean it off if you're going to start taking things apart and and working on it you, you, want, you don't want to get more sand or any dirt down inside your engine. I'm talking about roadside service here. I'm not talking about rebuilding this carburetor on the bench and doing all that. I'm just talking about what size the carburetor is, what they're referring to, what the different screws are for. You, you can't adjust this. I mean, you change the jets to adjust the, uh, the idle, but you use the, the, the flow. And then, of course, there's the carburetor speed. You know, you want to you wanna get your speed, and that's just holding the shaft open a little bit. So you've got the main place for the problems on these doggone things is right up here in this idle jet and people just don't know where it is they take out the needle and blow and this is where they should be looking up here up higher so I hope this helps and I'm not really I don't have a clock but I suspect I'm running out of time great carburetors great design and we'll go over the Delorto carburetors for comparison in another uh, another vid but uh, just thought you might want to see this and uh, learn a little bit more about the Weber carburetor secrets uh, because a lot of people don't know them and I hope this helps somebody uh, and I'm really toying with the idea of trying this out with the 2 liter this is a, a 44 Weber uh, but I don't have a lot of jets for it and I'm almost thinking if I put the uh, the smaller 40 on that has uh, 28 millimeter throats in it and use the jets off of this bigger carburetor I might be able to get that 2 liter to run uh, fairly well but uh, uh, I'll share that with you when the time comes and we'll, we'll work on it uh, I just noticed a little little o-ring here probably fell off when I took one of those uh, jets out you have to be very careful those o-rings you need to seal this stuff if, you, if you're leaking air by one of these ports it's going to affect the way that cylinder runs and uh, one way, before I go real quick, one way to see, to tell if which carburetor, which jet is clogged, is to one at a time, go to your idle mixture screw and turn it in, and then turn it back out. The same way, count how many turns you put it in, and then count how many turns you're turning it back out. If it does not affect the way the engine's running, and it's running poorly, that's probably the place I would start. If you turn that screw in and your engine starts stumbling and running bad, that means that's clear and that circuit is working. So go on to the next one. Back it out the same amount, put it back where it was, try the same thing to the next one. And if it doesn't have any effect, that's where I would start. If it does have an effect, then I would go on to the next one on the other side of the engine. So, uh, I don't know. Hope this helps. And, uh, have a great day.